here with Chelsea legend Ron Harris. Um, Ron, I mean, you must have incredibly fond memories of your time at Stamford Bridge, a, a lifelong connection to the club. Well, I, I uh, went there as a 15-year-old lad uh, and, and left after 21 years. Uh, very, very happy years. Uh, uh, what was I played under seven managers, who I respected every one of them. I don't think I ever, anybody would tell you, ever went in and asked for a transfer for more money or or what that seems to be the, the in thing nowadays. But, uh, you know, I do the hospitality there, which I enjoy. Uh, and I look forward to, you know, going there on a match race. We've got a selection of, of <coughs> pictures here. I mean, there's a, there's a team lineup from 66, <coughs> 67 there, which I guess was the, the start of the period that led to the success in the early, in the early 70s. Uh, yeah, that would, that would have, uh, Ken Shallow would have been the manager there. He's in the, in the background. There's nine of those players mm. there that appeared in the 1970 Cup final. Uh, and some well, uh, that, that played in the 66, 67 one. Mm. So, and they've always had a sprinkling of good youngsters that sure. have come through the youth ranks. It was a very gifted generation of players, and obviously, wasn't it? Do, they, do any of them particularly stand out in, in your memory? <clears throat> well, I've, I've always said to people, and everybody has a different opinion, but uh, I think the most gifted player that I played with in my time at Chelsea Football Club was Peter Osgood. Uh, I think he's uh, so well respected by the Chelsea supporters, uh, you know, great lad, uh, unfortunately died back just over three years ago and I think a great, great player. You mentioned the, the 70, 1970 FA Cup win, obviously this season after yeah. you won the Cup Winners' Cup. Cup, Winners Cup yeah. were, they the, were they the highlights of your, of your time at Stamford Bridge? <clears throat> uh, I would say so, yes. Uh, and, you know, um, I can honestly say that I'm proud of the fact that I've played more games than anybody in the history of Chelsea Football Club. Uh, I've played, what, 795 games uh, and I can't ever see that ever being broken, the way football players move around. Uh, today, uh, I was the first player ever to lift the FA Cup uh, and the first captain ever to lift the European Cup Winners' Cup. So I'm very proud of what I achieved at Chelsea Football Club. As you say, you were the captain of, of both <coughs> of those sides. We've got, you know, got pictures of, here, of you here with the cup. There's a yes. shot of you collecting the cup and a slightly strange shot of you in a photographic booth with the cup. Ron, what was going on there? Well, I think what happened there at, uh, is that uh, my first son was born uh, the day after the replay. Uh, and I remember you know, shooting up to the hospital uh, to have a couple of pictures done. And also, I think the following day we were uh, went over to the West Indies to, to play in a tournament, and uh, you know I had to shoot to, to near Chelsea to to have the photos done with me in the booth lifting the, the cup. People talk yeah. about, I mean, it's a very obviously it's a very famous, some would say infamous game that that 70 Cup final. I think it's been it's been shown to a couple of modern day referees, and they say there'd be 13 bookings and half a dozen sendings off. Did it did it feel like that at the time? Obviously, Chelsea well, leads an intense rivalry. Well, I think it's always been, you know, uh, I think they were two great sides, uh, very very competitive. Uh, I've said to people that uh, I think we had three exceptional players in our side at Chelsea: Peter Osgood. Alan Hudson and Charlie Cook. When it got a bit tough, you could roll up your sleeves and look after yourself. Uh, I think you know people have gone on record saying it's the most fearsome cup tie they've ever seen, and I've, I've had you know referees that have looked at it and said they'd have been lucky if they, you know, there'd have been about four players aside. But that's the way football was. Well, I don't say the way football was. That's that's the sort of games you played, and uh, you know over the two, I think we was fortunate in the first game to come away with a draw. Uh, but as soon as Peter Osgood equalised after 70 minutes, I think that you know they they seemed to get a bit deflated late, and I think it was just a matter of time before we uh, went and scored the second goal. There's a wonderful picture there of, of you. How was how the, how oh, the was singing, that, how that the was singing uh, voices? That's you Lewis guys the doing, colour. That was the colour, the number three in the chart. Yeah, we had a good time. That was taken at a studio. I was at Highbury. Uh, had a few drinks to get us in the right frame of mind singing, and uh, yeah, it was good. And as I say, it reached number three in the charts and uh, at least I can turn around and say I've sung on top of the pops. <laughs> There's a lovely photograph there of yourself with Keith Weller with the company. Fantastic shirt Keith sport in there. Yeah, a bit of a character Keith, sadly died a few years ago, but uh, he played in the uh, in the game in, in Athens and uh, yeah, he was a good lad Keith, 
good lad, good player. And as you say, one, one of many good players, obviously. Yes. You know, <clears throat> clearly, you, know, you, didn't, you didn't get your nickname for, no, for nothing, Ron, and there were one or two incidents with the referee. Do you remember that? I think it was an FA Cup tie at Brighton. Looks like you've, you've been a little bit, a little bit no, naughty what, there. What happened, I'll tell you what happened there. I can't remember the referee, but uh, we were winning 2 0 with 10 minutes to go. Uh, we conceded a free kick on the edge of the box. And uh, as we lined up on, in the wall, I was in the wall at the time, they had a lad that was pushing and shoving, and you know, we pushed him away. Uh, I'll never forget the fella's name, Eddie Spirit, come from Ipswich to Brighton and he, he went down like a sack of coal. Uh, you know, the referee and the linesman looked at each other and I got sent off. Uh, I can honestly tell you I've never hit anybody in my life, I've kicked a few people, but nobody can accuse me of, <clears throat> of punching anybody. I know people have turned around and say, well, we complain today about people falling over, but uh, <clears throat> I... Years ago, uh, I went up before the FA and got banned for three matches. And uh, <clears throat> uh, you could appeal against the sentence, and I appealed. Uh, and they have like an independent, they have a fella from the FA, uh, Stan Cullis, the old Wolves fella, represented me. Uh, and they had a fella builder uh, called George Waits, was a big building fella. Uh, and they brought all the evidence in, and uh, <clears throat> you know. There used to be a, a reverend that used to support Brighton and he wrote a lovely letter stating that from where EC there was no contact and everything and uh, I got away with it. I, got, I think I got fined a few hundred quid.